Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports, brought to you by KillCliffCBD.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. This is an emergency show, kids. An emergency. Who knew Street Jesus was going to literally come off the street and fight Usman for the championship tomorrow night? D'Anthony and I needed to go live right in your faces to get you these odds because... Let's face it, there's nothing else to bet on. D'Anthony, how are you in Wilmington, North Carolina today? Um, it's hot. <laughs> it's hot there. It's it's 104 here. Yeah. I'm in an Airbnb. There is a what appears to be an Airbnb picture in the background of just an Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. like a generic postcard. So you know it's real. Um what, the building? No, that I'm actually in Austin. I mean, you can if you can see a, a painting of it behind me, then clearly you know that I'm in Austin, Texas. Mm, yeah, that's not true, but sure. <laughs> uh, oh, the depression is starting to set in, D'Anthony. Not the heat. College football. Um, look, we called this weeks ago. I, people were furious about it, too, by the way. They were furious about the college football thing. They were fur- furious about the NFL. Um, I got... I got a, a nasty comment on Twitter that was um, maybe better than going back to the new guy. Was uh, man, I heard your show today about football. You and Dan are wrong, dude. You're a fucking zealous actor trying to make sports predictions. And I was like, hey, man, it all came true. So uh, is zealous the real phrase? No, it's not. I, I think D is like the furthest it goes down. The fact that he went all the way down. The alphabet um, actually meant a lot to me. Well, at least he knows the alphabet, I guess. Yeah, so I hit him back, and I go, hey, man, what's up now? And he, <laughs> and he just goes, oh, shit, man, I'm sorry. Um, and I actually really liked accepted. <laughs> you should never apologize for talking shit to people. <laughs> not me, him. No, I'm, um, no he, I know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. He, shouldn't, he should not have apologized to you. He should have doubled down like Bubba Wallace does and just keep talking shit. <laughs> that's the recipe yeah well you know some people apologize you know speaking of which we got breaking news breaking news right now of a, a big apology do you hear what happened to Woj at ESPN no what happened now with that guy <laughs> I mean he's the guy that usually breaks all the big sports news correct he breaks all of the biggest NBA news yeah. they're called Woj bombs um, Adrian Wojnarowski it looked best in the biz NBA wise in my opinion Um, and, uh, if you see him, it is unexpected what came out of his mouth today. Um, he got into it with a Senator, um, Senator Hartley, I believe. Is it Hartley or Holly? Which one is it? Could be Hartley. You're talking about, about, about the names on the jerseys and shit. Holly. Holly Holly is the guy's name. Yes. Correct. Um, and he was asking commissioner, uh, you know, uh, Adam Silver, um, what what he thought about uh, having anti Chinese remarks on the back of the jersey uh, as well? There was a list of like maybe five questions on there that he was asking of like, all right, if if we're truly going to stand up to people and everything that's going on in the world, are we going to say anything about the protests that were going on? When you Hong say anti China, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hong Kong, not like fuck China, but like supportive of Hong Kong. Correct. Okay. Um, and he also asked later on in the questions about um, what we were going to do about. Uh, you know, the NBA doing more and more things with China, considering all that's going on and everything else. And uh, Woj just responded in an email, fuck you. (laughs) Well, that's nothing new. That's nothing new. Come on. So the the, the senator, uh, Josh Howley, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And also, I just don't care. It's it's H-A-W-L-E-Y. You should have just changed your name if you wanted me to get it right. Um, posted it. He screenshotted uh, Woj's response in an email and uh, and put it on his Twitter. He seemed to be having a good time with it. Uh, the ESPN executives were not having a good time with it. Uh, not only did they apologize on his behalf, but then Woj himself had to release an apology. <clears throat> um, to me, man, this is sports. This is what goes on behind the scenes. Do I agree with Adrian Wojnarowski on this one? No, I don't, actually. Um, we're doing way too much shit with China, especially regarding the NBA. Uh, and their logos have been on our jerseys for the last two or three years now. Um, you know, them pulling off the NBA off of all their networks over there is clearly we hate America type shit. And that happened after the uh, uh, comments by the Houston Rockets owner. 
Um, but, uh, you know, this is how people talk behind the scenes. This is how dudes talk to each other, in particular in sports. I'm, I'm sure Woj just said worse to people, and I don't think he should have apologized for this, to be no, honest. No, I don't, I don't think so either. And I think uh, fucking Josh Howley is everything that's wrong with American politics, frankly. Not that we're mm -hmm. really talking about that right now, but this is a guy who fucking... Uh, you know, Silver Spoon kind of guy, Yale, fucking Stanford, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm an attorney. Now I'm a senator. Get fucked, you piece of shit. I fucking hate these people, man, so much. I can't, I just can't with these, with these assholes anymore. I, like, sorry, Woj, for your woes, uh, but I'll pick up the mantle and start openly talking shit to all these people on your behalf. Because you're absolutely, he is absolutely right to one, be angry about the fucking hypocrisy that's going on with the NBA in China, and two, to call everybody fucking out about it. And if you've got a problem with that, maybe you should fucking look at your behavior, LeBron James, Adam Silver. Maybe you should stop sucking China's dick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you think that's a fucking place to, to hold up and cherish? Get fucked. Yeah, and, and look, that was the senator's point in all of this. Um, and look, I, I don't have any problem with the response. Everybody talks to each other like this. This is how oh, yeah. dudes talk. For sure. I hate this. I'm shocked about, oh, my God, the language. I'm going to clutch my pearls over this language. Yeah. It's sports. You hear the most disgusting shit every single day in a locker room. You've been in them. I've been in them. Uh, this, this Johnny Depp trial that's going on right now over in England is, is really showing you what dudes talk about. And, and actually, after reading... These text messages from Don, Johnny Depp. We got to have him on the show. He said that he wanted to burn Amber Heard's body and then fuck her dead corpse. That's something that Dan Holloway would say. Uh, no. Come on. <laughs> no. Probably, I probably would say that, yeah. Um. <laughs> but the point is, we all talk like this. And, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. We shouldn't be apologizing for every last little thing. And again, and again, I'm not part of the cancel culture. I don't think that Woj should be canceled for this. Some people are calling for his job on Twitter right now, and it's like, man, get the fuck over it. Do, do I agree with the way that uh, NBA deals with China? No, I don't. But I, I also don't disagree with somebody's opinion um, on what they want to call senators and, and everything else. So I don't understand. If he wants to say fuck you, it's fine. Yeah, I don't get why he did it, though. Why say fuck you in that case? What was the point? I think because, um, you know, there was a list of questions, about five questions. And uh, it, look, it's, it's, it's a Republican questioning the commissioner of the NBA, asking them why they do so much shit with China. Um, and he didn't like the line of questioning. He said, fuck you. Um, did not say anything more than those two words. And uh, it's going to happen. You're not going to like people's questions all the time. Um, they're not going to like you. You're not going to like certain people. Um, but the way that politics is continuously mixing into sports is a very dangerous thing right now, in my opinion. I mean, it's uh, it makes things volatile, I guess. But, uh, you know, there, there's something to be said about people at large having a say about what happens in their country. And, you know, cancel culture is just the uh, – it's it's an overreaction to that fact like you just got to listen and then respond and everybody's response has to be judged by its merit and they're not all equal but like the the right to say them is held uh equally you know what i mean like mm -hmm. I, I don't get it i don't get it with all this shit i don't like with um deshaun jackson for example mm -hmm. not in favor of just ruining his career because he said and believes some stupid shit that he was probably taught when he was a teenager or like in his early 20s uh, it's like everybody has dumb ideas that they hear from dumb motherfuckers and until they say that out loud those ideas never get exposed i'd much rather have someone say dumb shit out loud and then get hammered for it learn a lesson and then move on than i would just like fucking send them packing fuck it you know what i mean it doesn't make any sense yeah, and I, I liked uh, uh, Julian Edelman's response from the New England Patriots because he's Jewish um, regarding these uh, comments that he left on his Instagram stories. If you haven't heard about it, uh, Deshaun Jack Jackson, the wide receiver for Philadelphia Eagles, made a bunch of derogatory remarks regarding Jewish people. And uh, Julian Edelman said, hey, man, it's as hateful to me uh, as it is when somebody is offens offensive to the black culture. So he goes, I tell you what. How about we both go down to there's a, a, a museum in Washington. One's a Holocaust museum and one's a, there's an African-American museum in there. And he goes, let's just go together and hang out and learn about e each other's cultures. Um, and then hopefully that'll change your mind about the way you feel about certain things in our 
culture and uh, and maybe vice versa. Um, and I thought that was super interesting. Deshaun Jackson hasn't responded yet, but, um, you know, if you don't give these people second chances or a chance to learn about anything and you just, well, fuck it, they're all done. Um, you could do that with every single person in America, in my opinion. You could dig through text messages, conversations or uh, hidden conversations on everyone um, and cancel every single person in the country if you truly wanted to. But, you know, the the expectancy is is that you will grow and learn as a, as a person and uh, and mature out of things. And uh, like you said, Dan, a lot of these people were taught fucked up things growing up. Um, and it's hard to, to overturn that and, and change your mind about it. But you do, hopefully, as you get older and time goes on. So, you know, we'll see what happens with it. But uh, the Eagles aren't sure what to do with him right now, whether or not they're going to cut him or not. That would be a huge mistake on their part to do that. And it would be a mistake on the NFL's part to request it, and it's a mistake on society's part to believe that that's an appropriate way to, to treat that kind of thing. Now, if he, you know, continued to say stuff like that, I guess maybe you take another look at it, but you can't fucking punish the first expression of a bad idea because it's a learning opportunity for everybody, not just him, but everybody that's watching that shit. Like, there's probably a lot of people whose dumbass fucking crazy uncle, of which we've all had one that's drunk as fuck all the time, yeah. told, told him 30 goddamn years ago, or he's younger, but so like 15 years ago, like, oh, fucking this and that and fucking Farrakhan and blah, blah, blah. And he didn't understand the context of that because most people don't really look into shit like that. So now you say it out loud and there's probably hundreds of thousands of people that, that have heard that same stupid bullshit from some dumbass in their family when they were growing up and don't understand how fucking truly evil Farrakhan was. He was like, he used his position and influence not to help bring his other people up, but to step on the heads of Jewish people. Like that was like a big part of his platform. And a lot of people mm -hmm. just don't know that. I mean, I, I don't personally, I don't think there's any excuse for not knowing that at this point, but a lot of people don't. And it's a reality. So you can either use this as an opportunity to inform people and educate people, or you can be a little bitch, take your ball and go home. It's your choice. I, I, I agree. Um, and we'll see what happens uh, in this case and, and with all these fucking people. But uh, I don't want to. I'm not ready to cancel Deshaun Jackson yet. I'm not ready to cancel Woj yet. Um, people make mistakes and it's it, it, whatever, man. It's how you respond to it. I'm a little more uh, concerned with uh, Steven Jackson than I am Deshaun Jackson, to be honest. Mm, Doubling down mm. on that shit and saying, yeah, what he said was right. And then. You know, whatever. And then he yeah. said, like, he literally said, oh, well, Deshaun Jackson was right. And then he said that got taken out of context. Like, look, man, it's 2020. Like, yeah, you can edit video, but that raw video is out there. We can just go look at it right now. Fuck face. You can't just make shit up. <laughs> and I like Steven Jackson, by the way. I, I enjoyed the way he um, – I thought he took a pretty – despite having a close personal relationship with George Floyd, he still had a relatively nuanced approach to this whole thing. He wasn't, like he, – he wasn't shouting about fucking – kill whitey and fucking get rid of cops and all that bullshit he kept it pretty close to the chest he promoted uh floyd's journey and mm -hmm. how he was trying to better himself that that the the family side of him and all that stuff i mean but this is like stupid man like i i say that to say i don't intrinsically dislike stephen jackson i think he's actually a relatively smart dude but he's another guy that grew up in that atmosphere and he probably doesn't realize the gravity of what he's saying I agree um, because look, the, all this shit starts as a child. We've yeah. gone over this in other shows um, on both you sides. Grew up with it, yeah. Uh, like, I, like I, I, it's it's black people in America right now have never been threatened by dogs, by police, right? But because of what happened in the fifties and sixties, there are black children and people in their twenties, thirties, and forties right now that never experienced that that are fucking deathly afraid of dogs because of what their parents and family members have told them about those experiences back in the day. That's just how it works, man. Like you get that information from your family members or whomever's mm -hmm. close to you when you're young. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing with fucking little racist white kids. You think it's and it's not all pumping them full of hate. Like you're just casually throwing around racist shit when they're we're not they're not intellectually sophisticated enough to understand that it's in jest and that you actually value those people. Because in the, if you send a child into an infantry team room, that's a bad place for them to be. Because we're, we're going to say some <laughs> horrible things to each other, regardless of what your, your uh, race or religion or whatever the fuck else is, we're going to talk shit about it. Whatever it is, whatever baggage you bring in to the team room, we're going to fucking tear it apart. It's just how it is. Uh, so... You know, if you're a parent of young children, I feel like you really got to make an effort 
to not do that until they can understand that it's not real, that it's a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I 100% agree. Uh, moving on to college football, the Big Ten announced yesterday that they were switching to an all-conference schedule. Yep. Um, this is not a surprise, uh, no. and I also don't think this is the end of this. No, Duke's uh, coach said today he wants all-conference games too. Yeah, um, this is going to – we've heard from inside sources gonna, this is going to happen. The SEC is going to make an announcement by Monday, and so is the Big 12. Um, I think all conferences will follow suit, including the Pac-12 as well. Um, but if you want my honest opinion on all of this, because everybody's been hitting me up about Ohio State uh, over the, the, the course of the last 24 hours, I don't think there's going to be college football at all. And I want to reiterate that because we said it uh, last week or the week before. I, f I forget which show it was on. Um, I think this is a temporary stopgap to what is going to happen in the future. By moving to an all-conference schedule like this, I think it sets up for a spring season. Uh, where it is going to be an all-conference schedule only. This is kind of getting everyone prepared for that, and then they can eventually move to that in the spring. But I don't see a world in which they let college kids out there playing um, with this many well, I agree. reported cases. I agree, but I think that's stupid. I think they you just have. I think we as a as a society right now need to have a much. Uh, we we need to have a bigger appetite for not appetite that's not the right right word we need we need to have a lot more uh tolerance for coronavirus spreading amongst young people so the vast majority of people right now that are testing positive are young people so mm -hmm. that's like if you there's actually the atlantic did a really good piece on this data wise they they do a lot of editorializing at the end it's just fucking nonsense it doesn't match any of the numbers that they fucking report yeah but that's I, how I it agree. is but uh <laughs> but the article itself has a lot of great details in it like how there's a spike in cases now which means probably in two to three weeks we might see a spike in deaths but probably not this time because most of the people that are testing positive right now are young people because they've been out and about like mm -hmm. there, there's some thinking from a couple of people that there might be another spike in deaths like a big spike in deaths i don't personally think that's going to happen because i think it was like 70 percent of new cases are young people something like that and mm -hmm. it's because people are going out and fucking partying and shit it's a summer yeah um yeah. but uh i think there needs to be like for these guys that are world-class athletes that are young there's got to be a higher tolerance for this this shit the nfl said yesterday about how you can't swap jerseys anymore every fucking nfl player yesterday got on instagram and twitter and lit their ass up like this is fuck <laughs> like we can fucking wrestle each other to the ground for 60 minutes but i can't hand in my fucking shirt afterwards you stupid fuck that was the most ridiculous shit i've ever heard of yeah. also y yesterday on fake news if you didn't listen to it i thought you made one of the greatest points about uh the the testing that's going on currently in america that i haven't heard on any other or from any other news outlet there is, um, which is we have more testing available now. Therefore, the numbers are going to be higher because more and more people are getting tested. Um, I think n nobody understands that, that it's like, hey, the reason why uh, these numbers keep going up is because there is more available uh, places to get tested at. Right. Therefore, mm. you're getting better reporting on the numbers, mm. um, whereas before you weren't. So, yeah, the, the the case number was lower, but it's probably always been there. Yeah, um, and, and if it was, uh, if the if the if the median age of infected people stayed the same, I would absolutely expect uh, an uptick in deaths because if the same, if like 55 and older people or people with lung problems or fatties are still getting coronavirus at a higher rate than everybody else. Um, then yes, there's going to be more deaths and the death rate will go up. That's how it works because they're more, this is data science. God damn it. It's mm -hmm. mm. like, you, no, if you, but, but nobody, no if one you else has said that. If you don't know how to, and, and when you said it yesterday, I, I was with my wife. I apologize for interrupting you. No, um, I was with my wife yesterday on the way home from the studio after we did that show. And I was like, man, what Dan said is completely correct. And it's so simple, but why is that? not applied to any of these news articles that are being written about why the right. cases are rising. Well, tr Trump um, has we said it a couple times. We just have more available testing. Trump said it a couple of times, but, uh, and, and CNN and the Atlantic and the New York Times and Washington Post all responded um, in, in fashion, you know, as, as you would expect them to. Like, he, like they, they tried to say, and maybe he did say it like this, but I, I don't know for sure because I don't really pay attention to Trump, to be honest. But they said, like, he, his, his supposition is that 
the only reason the cases are rising is because we're doing more testing. Now that might be true. It might not. There's no way to know that. Like, yes, we are doing more testing. So yes, we are going to have more cases, but it, it's ballooned farther than we thought it would. Uh, that could either be because our supposition was wrong in the first place or because uh, more people are get actually getting it uh, in the aggregate. So it could be either one. We don't know that. But what we do know is that the people who are contracting it are younger, which means I don't expect a rise in, in, the, in the death rate or in deaths in general. As, as a matter of fact, I think it's going to go down. And the other part of that is <clears throat> we have to have a higher tolerance for people testing positive. If you're, if you're 20 years old, hey, hold on a second. It says I'm muted on there. Did you see that just then? You can still hear me, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're God fine. damn you're it. You're good man. to go. Technology, uh, brother. Technology, man. Yeah, so uh, th there's got to be a higher. And living through Zoom. <laughs> there's got to be a higher tolerance for people testing positive, or none of these sports are going to. Like, what, what's the threshold? Because last week, about 200 people died out of the 330 fucking million that are in this country. So, how many people. What's the limit? Like, 300 people probably died in traffic accidents to today, motherfucker. The, yeah. Like, 30,000 people a year die in traffic accidents. So. How, how many people does it have to be? How many cases and how many deaths is an appropriate level where we could just go back to normal? That's no one's no one's fucking talking about that shit. I, I would no, have thought I would have thought that 200 cases or 200 deaths in a week. That that's probably we can move on at this point. Thanks. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you in all of this. But uh, unfortunately, that's not the way it's going to work. I think a lot of these uh, universities are afraid of lawsuits. Because there is, let's face it, there is going to be one of these players that has got some underlying condition. They're going to get COVID and they're probably going to die. Um, what they want to do is minimize the legal and financial risk on that. Therefore, I truly believe college football will be moved to the spring in all conference schedule. And there will probably be a vaccine somewhere in the January area that will give them enough time. They'll be able to push back the NFL draft. I think we're going to see a vaccine in November, actually. I hope so. Uh, look, I hope so. Um, but, but the only question that would remain is if they do push this to spring, um, does Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, uh, the projected top two in the draft, do they even bother to play that close to the NFL draft? I wouldn't. I mean, maybe if I'm Justin Fields, but Trevor Lawrence, absolutely not. He has nothing left to prove. Uh, I agree with you. Fields, I agree with Fields you. only has, what, like 13 games under his belt as a starter, something like that, mm -hmm. maybe. But, hey, Joe Burles has only got fucking a handful of games, like a season <laughs> a season and three quarters or so under his belt, and he fucking went number one. So who knows, man? Yeah, um, I, I, I don't I'm know. I'm not really sure. I, look, Trevor Lawrence is, is probably <clears throat> a surefire number one pick, and I agree with you. With Fields, like, look, he has the opportunity to go and overtake him. I don't see him sitting out, whereas – uh, Trevor Lawrence, I do. We got a lot of messages from uh, Drinking Bros yesterday that said, hey, if everybody moves to um, an all-conference schedule uh, out of the Power Five conferences, what happens to Notre Dame? Here is my Rostradamus prediction <laughs> on that. Um, I think Notre Dame will slide over to the ACC. Right now, looking at their schedule, they're already playing six games against ACC opponents. Mm -hmm. um, that would make the most sense to me. And then just adding, you know, two more games to that schedule out of the ACC, and I think that would button it up for them for this season. Uh, I think the NFL draft would just be able to be pushed back by you know a month or so with this if you go in spring. Maybe, um, but, I mean, look, this, you're, this, this talk about spring, and I've seen it other places as well, I don't know that it – I don't know, man, because like the flu, this virus is going to come back in the spring. It's going to come back in late fall and spring. That's how. That's usually how these uh, cyclical uh, seasonal viruses work. So, like again, if we don't have some level of tolerance for the effects of coronavirus, then I, I don't know if when it happens. It might be fall of 2021 before we see fucking college sports, frankly. And it's because they're at much greater risk, not at not at dying, but of getting fucking sued. Like the NBA players are not going to be able to sue the NBA. I promise you that. They're, yeah. they're, they're in a union, they're under contract. I guarantee you there's been a deal made with directly with the union that says you, can't, you can opt out for whatever the fuck you want, but you can't sue us if you come and get it. There has, um, yes. That, that, and, that's correct. But there's that, no that, way that you can do that with fucking college players. That it's, no. This is not going to happen. And I think we might, be, we might not see college sports until next fall. I hope not because I don't know how much longer these universities can hold up. Everyone yeah. knows that football foots the bill for not only – 
all of college sports uh, because it trickles over into baseball and volleyball yeah. and uh, rowing and wrestling and everything else, as you saw with Stanford. Um, but it, it also pays for buildings, man. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. You, you look at Alabama, Ohio State's of the world, like that money coming in and out pays for a lot of shit, not just football. Um, and including tourism around the city mm. and towns and everything else, like at Ohio State, um, a friend of mine, Chris Corso, owns about 11 bars and restaurants uh, up there right around the stadium and everything else. And he went on the news last night and said, look, guys, if, if there is no ball this fall, I do not know how we'll be able to stay open. Well, it's not just them. I'm not sure how um, I'm not I'm not entirely certain some of these universities are going to continue to operate because, look, people are going to start transferring to schools that don't charge them 75 to 100 percent of full price for a distance learning like mm -hmm. people are going to leave if you're at, if you're at like fucking whatever school like penn state's pretty good about it i think they're relatively lower but they've had a distance them and usc as a private school even have had distance learning programs for fucking like 15 years now so they're probably set up for it but some of these other schools like the particularly the fucking ivy league like, yep. people are going to fucking leave, man. If you try to charge them that amount of money to fucking sit in their in fucking underwear at home, there's no fucking way that that's going to happen. So they may be losing to their two main sources of revenue, which is tuition and uh, and uh, even if they don't lose the t and, and, and college football, even if they don't lose the entirety of the tuition, they're going to have to compromise and bring those prices down, and they're going to lose revenue that way. So I don't know how they're going to keep their doors open. A lot of these universities are probably going to have a lot of financial trouble. I don't know if there's going to be some kind of bailout or if they just collapse entirely. I would be fine with a lot of them just going away because the education system in this country, particularly uh, secondary education, has been butt-fucking young Americans for the last 40 years. Like, costs have gone up and up and up and up. I remember maybe 13 or 14 years ago, Bill O'Reilly, the uh, you know, fucking genius he is, um, was talking about, yeah, I used to, I, when I went to Harvard, I painted houses during the summer to pay my way through Harvard. I'm like, yeah, go do that now, fuck face. See how many houses you would have to paint <laughs> to, to go to fucking Harvard? Are you kidding me, you piece you'd of shit? To, you'd have to paint all of Beverly Yeah, Hills. dude. I mean, get the fuck out of here. Uh, it's just not going to happen anymore. You can't. No, and looking at the numbers, uh, Harvard's tuition right now is $49,850 a yeah. year. So, uh, Bill, you're looking at a sweet bill of 200 k for four years, assuming you do get through it in four years exactly. And that's for your fucking undergrad. I mean, it's not even, it's, yeah. not, it's, not, just, uh, it's not just Ivy League schools, though. Stanford is $52,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Like, are you kidding me, dude? People are going to fucking leave. Yeah, and as a parent, if my kids were in college right now and they said, hey, you're going to learn from online, mm -hmm. congratulations. Um, they're going to learn from online at my house, yeah. not at that fucking university. <laughs> Yeah. So I think a lot of parents feel the same way. And uh, we had Neil Brown Jr. on. Uh, his kids go to USC and, and they were, you know, at the house with them yeah. um, at 22 years old, <laughs> learning in, in the other room. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy to me, but uh, it is the world we live in. And uh, look, I hope college football comes back. My prediction is the spring. You're saying not at all. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I, I'm not saying for sure not at all. I'm just saying if we don't develop some kind of tolerance for positive COVID tests, then it's not going to happen because people aren't going to fucking do it. Like there, there will absolutely be a resurgence of COVID in the spring, or a vaccine. If if the if the players themselves are able to have a vaccine, at least they can play. Now, fans in the stadiums and all that shit's another story. But the players can at least get on the field and play, and uh, and we'll see what happens. Um, it was a positive step to see the MLS come <clears> back <throat> the other nights. Because at least that's a you know eleven on eleven sport yeah. where there is contact and all that other stuff. Uh, I, I I did want to report that uh, Nashville, um, the Nashville team out of the MLS, has had a, a bunch of positive tests. So they pulled their team out of the MLS. Yeah, uh, yeah, they have. Yesterday. Which is funny because Nashville just sued uh, all their bars, just sued the government and got an injunction uh, to to open back up. Yeah, which uh, is and, interesting. And I know they're doing that in Texas as well. Yeah, like you can't, you can't, you just can't, man. It's we went through the numbers on fake news yesterday, but we're looking at about 125 or so thousand deaths. And remember that they included anybody that fucking had, even if if you had a fucking COVID T-shirt on, you got fucking classified as ha as dying from it. Uh, like something like 40 percent of these people also had the flu and or pneumonia or all three. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so whatever the fuck, but there are 125,000 deaths. U.S. officials are reporting now that 
the actual case number is about 10x what we thought it was. So it's like 33 million. That's about 0.38% death rate. Mm-hmm. The flu is 0.12 or so percent. So it's about th- three and some change times worse than the flu. That is, that's not, we're not, we're not marginalizing this shit anymore. I'm not saying it's fake. I'm saying it's about 3.2, 3.3% worse than the flu. Is that what it no. takes to shut the whole fucking economy down? Is that what it takes to ruin our economy? I, I, it, it's baffling to me. I don't get it. Like, wh- where, either, where, where are we here? What, what are we doing? Yeah, uh, it's, it's fucking crazy, man. And I, I know the, like, I, look, I'm in Texas right now. Um, and, and the bars and restaurants are suing the, the governor here. Uh, I don't know <clears> when this stops or where it ends. All I know is I want sports back immediately. And uh, Uncle Dana is the only one that is giving that to us. So we're going to do the sponsors real quick. And then we're going to get to the odds of one of the greatest fights of the year uh, that mm-hmm. was made on accident here. Um, we're going to give you the odds for uh, UFC 251 at Fight Islands. And uh, the island is called Yes. Yes, Queen. Yes. I hate that. That is my least favorite thing Same. that human beings say. It makes me, I fucking Same. feel so much rage when I hear someone say that, <laughs> that it's almost intolerable. Like I almost faint. I almost have a stroke. That's how bad it is. Same. Uh, and I don't know why they named the island that, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, come on, man. You, you built Fight Island. It's cool as shit. Everybody's going to, you know, uh, fight and live and, and you got testing. It's sexy outside. There's a bunch of hot reporters in there today. Uh, and then you name the island Yaz. No, Y-A-S. They should have named it Fuck Island. Yeah, I know, because that's what's going to happen. Everybody's been tested. You're over there. There's yeah. a lot of prostitutes over there. I'm sure, yeah. Abu Dhabi. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. quite a few. So I, I would I actually, Oof. I don't know if you saw, uh, before we get to the sponsors, I don't know if you saw, um, God, what's his name? Uh, fuck. The, uh, the guy from the Cavaliers that didn't take that last second shot and LeBron's yelling at him. What's his name? Oh, shit. Um, J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith. Did you see him fucking around in the hotel thing down in Orlando yesterday. I want them to make, I want the NBA to make a reality show of all these drunk, rich assholes running around. Cause you know, they're going to be fucking with each other the whole time. Right? Like you put yeah. a bunch, it's dudes only. They're not going to be able to hang out with their families and shit for the most part. So it's dudes only alcohol boredom. What do you think is going to happen? They're going to, they're <laughs> going to be fucking with each other constantly. Make it a reality show. You can edit it after the fact and take all the weird shit out. You know what the cool thing about that is? And I look, I hope the NBA is able to go off without a hitch and, uh, and it actually happens, but what it reminded me of looking at the, the behind the scenes footage that I have seen, because somebody is documenting it, by the way. Too. Yeah. Um, and I, I guarantee you, because Adam Silver was the one who set up that last dance doc um, years and years ago with MJ. So I guarantee you he's documenting this as, as well as one of these 30 for 30s, because you're, you're right. This story is so crazy and so unbelievable, and it hopefully is a once in a lifetime thing. It would be great to see a documentary of what goes on behind mm-hmm. the scenes, but what the the small footage that I've seen out of there, um, it looks like old school AAU when they were in high school and all these kids used to get together at a university. It was the best of the best, and they were having a good time, living in dorms together, and all that shit. And uh, it has that same type of feeling. Hopefully, that joy and that level of competition spills over until the action into the actual games uh, when when it starts here in a couple weeks because. It looks fun as shit, man. It, it looks like shit we used to do when we it, were it's in a AAU. fucking door room, except for everybody's a millionaire, dude. I know. I mean, goddamn, <laughs> can you imagine the fuckery that's going on right now? Like, oh, all all you can do best. is all you can do is like play video games, watch TV, eat food, and fucking work out, play play basketball. That's all you can do. You know what I mean? It's a dream. It's literally like being in college without want to get away from their families. It's like being a college basketball player, but there's no classes right now, mm-hmm. and you're rich. So it's like, what rich. the fuck, man? I can't imagine. Like they're. There are a lot of like super hardcore pranksters in the NBA too. Like uh, Donka's a fucking uh, uh, a prankster. What's the dude? Steven Adams from Oklahoma. Yep. He loves yep. fucking with people. Like these guys are probably having the time of their life right now. Uh, I bet it's amazing. The only one who's disappointed is probably Zion because he's making less money in the NBA than he did in college. <laughs> yeah. Well, his uh, <laughs> his stepdad was making most of the money, apparently. <laughs> I wonder if he knew that he took his stepdad. Zion's gonna be hundred thousand dollars. He, he's gonna be the last. Dude, his family will be the last people ever prosecuted for that because soon college players are going to start getting paid, and he'll he's going to be like that last motherfucker that gets arrested for weed. He's like, I'm still in jail over here. Can somebody let me the fuck out, please? Jesus Christ! By the way, the money he made in college is nothing compared to what Shaq made in college. Come on, no, no, LSU, Cam, fucking Cam Newton. Oh yeah, Cam Newton too. Yeah, at Auburn. 
Jesus Christ. Uh, let's get to the sponsors. First and foremost is our chief sponsor, KillCliffCBD.com. Best in the biz. Uh, 25 milligrams in every single can. I had cases shipped out to my, my new place in Austin. I cannot go a night without no, this. I just bought three new cases today. I know. So did I. Three amazing flavors. Uh, grape, uh, mango, and orange kush. I, I'm not going to lie. So I had a, the last case I was down to, D'Anthony, was the mango. And it's like, dude, I, I can't decide between the three of them now. Um, fuck, that's, it, it's just the best. It's the best. It's one of the best fucking sponsors we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, go to killcliffcbd.com <laughs> today. You will not piss hot uh, at all if you have a drug test. Um, it's great for your joints, great for any aches and pains that you have. Uh, and just if you're chilling out at night, uh, I shouldn't be saying this, but I will. Somebody said it was Joe Rogan on his his podcast because he's he's got I don't know if he's sponsored by Kilco CBD as well, but um, he was saying it goes great when you're smoking weed, and uh, he is 100 <clears throat> percent correct on well, that. Well, that's so it's uh, basic science. I've had a number of people that work in the CBD industry, like CEOs of of several companies that I've talked to, uh, tell me that CBD is more effective when you are a regular weed smoker because mm -hmm. of the saturation of cannabinoids in your bloodstream and your brain. So THC is not water soluble, it's fat soluble. So it bonds to the neural channels in your brain. That's one of the reasons it can cause some cognitive decline over time. So maybe take a day or two off here and there. I don't know. But anyways, it definitely <laughs> like definitely, uh, whenever weed gets legal here soon, we'll get a weed sponsor and we'll fucking pair them up. Yeah, it'd be great. Uh, in the meantime, go to <clears throat> KillCliffCBD.com today. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for twenty percent off and free shipping. Uh, free shipping is a big deal. KillCliffCBD.com promo code Drinking Bros twenty percent off uh, and free shipping on that. Next up, we got MyBookie.com promo code Drinking Bros will give you one hundred and fifty percent of your deposit back. Look, we're we're gambling junkies uh my bookie is back with us for another year we couldn't be more amped about it and we are giving you the odds today everybody has been asking um typically we do the show on tuesdays uh but we wanted to see how this would play out through the week with masvidal uh to see if he would make weight um in the meantime the odds have changed on this and we're going to go through all of them for ufc 251 um on mybookie.com Again, promo code Drinking Bros gets you 150% of your deposit back. We'll be going through all the odds with you uh, and betting on them. And then go to uh, our Facebook group, Drinking Bros Sports, and sign up. It's free. Uh, it's a private group. That way you can see our actual betting slips on there um, of who we're betting on for the night. I'll be posting them immediately after this show. In the meantime, go to mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. We'll give you 150% of your deposit back and bet on this shit with us is the only thing we have to gamble on. Thank you, Dana White. Last but not least, <laughs> ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Finest mattresses in the business. Um, right now, their deals are fucking insanity because of everything that's going on. They've stepped it up. That uh, 4th of July sale of 30% off of bundle packages, still going on. Uh, the 25% off everything in the store, still going on. Um, if you buy a mattress, you get two free pillows. That is still going on. I don't know how they're able to, to keep in business, but uh, since they're doing it, might as well take advantage of these fucking deals, dude. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. And as always, they got a 36 month pay as you go program, no interest on that. And all of those deals that I just mentioned at the top are applicable with the pay as you go program. Um, if, if we're gonna be stuck inside, and they're gonna fucking lock us in again. You might as well do it in comfort. Uh, get an adjustable base and a new mattress today. Get those free pillows. You were good to go through Christmas or whenever the fucking the vaccination comes from. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Let's get to UFC 251. This is a monster card, D'Anthony. Yep. Yeah, this is the biggest one uh, since the first one. What was it? Uh, June 8th or May 8th? I agree. May 15th. Yeah. I don't remember when it was. Yep. I believe it was May 14th, if memory serves me correctly. It was 248, but, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is a big one here. Um, oh, it was May 7th. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, man. Uh, shit, man. I, look, Jorge Masvidal is, is one of my favorites. Um, I love watching him uh, like I love watching Conor McGregor. I love shit talkers, man. My favorite uh, professional athletes of all time are Ricky Henderson and Deion Sanders. Therefore, I gravitate towards these guys. Um, I really wanted to see him fight uh, Usman uh, a couple months ago with the first one. They could not make a deal work. Um, 
Burns backed out of this one. They're not saying it was COVID, but let's face it. Nobody gets sick in the middle of the night and then cancels a week before. I'm assuming it was coronavirus on that one. Uh, that has left us with the headliner of uh, Masvidal versus Usman. What are the odds down to now? Because uh, two days ago, it was plus 300. Or, I'm sorry, minus 300 for Usman. Um, uh, let's see. Right now, for Usman, it's minus 235. Uh, plus 175 for Masvidal. I don't know if that's because he's fighting on short notice. My opinion, mm -hmm. uh, that is a non-factor for Masvidal. As a matter of fact, I think he benefits from that in the same way that Nate Diaz has benefited from it in the past because he's a fucking – he's a smart fighter, but he's also, like, a fucking – he wants to get into it with you. He wants – he doesn't – like, he's not the type to shy away from the jab and shit like that. He's not backing up all the time. He's fucking, he's a hard charger. Um, not that Usman's not a great fighter. He obviously is. That's why he's favored. Um, I just don't think, from the, the articles I've been reading, one of the reasons they think Usman is favored is because more prep time and all that bullshit. But he was prepping for a different fighter, man. I mean, it's like the, the mental work. I wish we had an actual UFC fighter in here to discuss some of that shit right now. Um, we'll get Ryan Bader on soon to discuss some of this stuff. Yeah, just just about <clears throat> whatever the fuck, but the preparation, yeah, yeah, of this because it's not just physical preparation. Like you have a game plan, and you train for that game plan for weeks and weeks, sometimes months, depending on you know how the fights are scheduled. And having a switch up like that, I think it fucked Conor McGregor up when he fought Nate Diaz that time. Honestly, I think he was out of sorts. He looked out of sorts during that fight, and I th we'll see what happens here. Usman is a really really good fighter. Um, the strangest thing about this to me is that the over under for rounds is set at four and a half. Right. Um, so what, what is the over under for the audience? Tell them what the over under is for this uh, on this. Uh, the over is minus 105 mm -hmm. and the under is minus 125. Uh, neither one, is, neither one's a great bet, but I mean, <sighs> it's pretty much even money though. I will say that. So I, look, it's close, I'm going yeah. to hammer the under on this because yeah. these guys, are who they are who are you actually taking in this are you taking street jesus or are you I, taking Usman? i'm taking masvidal but it's not because of all the reasons i've been hearing all the hype around him and all that bullshit i think Usman's a great fighter i think Usman's been preparing for somebody else and now masvidal is going to come in and fucking whoop his ass honestly i think he's going to get surprised and i think uh that uh i i think it it works to masvidal's benefit he's coming off a pretty d decent streak of fights um, and he's the kind of guy, like if if you if I if if I'm gonna go down a roster and be like, hey, you got five days to put a fight together, he's the top of my list. He's the first guy I'm picking because I feel like he's always ready mentally. He's always ready to fight, and not everybody's right. like that. Like I don't I don't know if uh, I got like Poirier for example is always ready to fight. I think he's there's a lot of mental preparation for his type of game. Uh, mm -hmm. Masvidal is just gonna like he he <laughs> that that shit he pulled with Ben Askren. He didn't spend fucking three months coming up with that. When he was probably fucking hanging out when I was like, you know what? I'm just going to knee this motherfucker in the face. And that was it. <laughs> and he did it. Like, he, he, he said, he's, he's he a street they, fighter. Yeah, he said they, they did work on it for a few weeks. Um, oh, yeah, but, during the uh, camp. Yeah, for sure. But yeah. he didn't, like, he didn't, that wasn't something that he was pouring over. I, that was his strategy the whole time. I guarantee you he's got a strategy, whatever it is, for uh, Usman. And mm -hmm. to me, he's one of those guys that uh, embodies what, um, what uh, General Mattis always used to say, which is be polite and professional, but have a plan to kill everybody you meet. Um, I feel like Masvidal is that guy. And on short notice, like if, if this were a three-month prep, I think Usman would probably beat him. But I don't think okay. he's going to beat him on short notice. So uh, initially in the week on Drinking Bro Sports uh, on our Facebook page, uh, you know, everybody had hit us up when this fight got announced. And I said, look, we'll do an emergency show on it. And I'll give you my thoughts. My initial thoughts are street Jesus. Now, when I hit send on that message on facebook uh i did that with my heart i did not do that with my wallet because i had not yet bet on this fight um once i saw that street jesus had to lose 19 and a half pounds in the last six days to make weight today which both fighters made weight at 170 on the <clears throat> dot um i there was some pictures floating around social media where masvidal is wrapped up like a mummy in in some form of towels uh i, I don't know if those are hot towels or what that does to you and then he's laying down on uh one of those tin foil like survivor things that you, you get wrapped around you when you're in a yeah. plane crash um I'm, I'm not sure what that does to take off the weight um uh, it makes but you I did sweat. watch it does okay so I, I i did watch the weigh-in today he had to go completely naked which is uh 
not typical for him and they had to use a towel obviously right um for it he looked completely drained um i mean just absolutely fucking wiped uh i don't I, i'm with you I, I think street jesus is always ready to fight um they said that he has been training however not preparing for a, a fight and uh i think that last second weight cut for him will be too much i think uzman's too strong and so i'm going to to say uzman on this one and i'm going to go with my wallet versus my heart i really 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 would love to see street jesus knock him the fuck out uh in the first round and that would be my dream but this reminds me of when uh conor mcgregor signed up for nate diaz uh last minute notice it was a great fight and conor mcgregor gave it everything he had but he was not preparing for nate diaz and Nate Diaz was a little too big, and he was already ready for the fight that week. It was a hell of a fight, um, and McGregor came back the second one and got him. But uh, it reminds me of the same thing of, hey, this is a great last-second fill-in. I'm sure Street Jesus is going to give him all he's got, but I, uh, my betting wallet and my American dollars are going on Usman in this one. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I mean, some fights in the past have that's definitely been uh, a problem. Like Chael Sonnen, when he fought Anderson Silva the second time, had to cut like 20 pounds in, in a day and a half. Um, Masvidal had six days mm -hmm. to cut 20 pounds, give or take, 18, yes. 18 or so. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem for him, honestly. With, with today's technology, like he's probably pounding liquid IV right now, getting rehydrated. Uh, the it's he's also not uh a super lean guy all the time like he walks around at about 200 sometimes bigger than that yeah like he's I, used he's, to he's used to over a four week or so period cutting like 25 to 30 correct. pounds so yeah. I, don't, I don't know that it's going to have the effect that a lot of people think it's going to have on him i guess it depends on how much weight he cut in the last two or three days versus the first two or three of that cycle that would be but we don't know that yet we don't all i know is what he looked like at the weigh-in today and he looked like death and um you know look we've all seen f friends uh, of ours that mm -hmm. are cutting weight for either wrestling tournaments or or mma um fuck, even disgusting justin and, and people like that like it is rough on your system um that close especially with the testing that's going on and you know would they have to get tested three times before they could get on two different flights yeah and everything else <laughs> and then he you got to come to uh yes queen island yeah. and then uh try to sweat out the rest of it i don't know what his preparation is like he just he looked very gaunt today yep um obviously that's gonna uh, change overnight because he's gonna be able to fill up um and maybe that's part of his strategy of like hey man i've i've got a round maybe a round and a half to knock this guy the fuck out yeah. before i am completely drained of energy so maybe they have some plan um, going in there, I, how, I, however, just cannot bet against Usman um, going through a full uh, training camp. Yeah, yeah. At least preparing for someone. So I just, that's, I just, that's I think money's going. I, Masvidal reminds me of a fucking Marine, to be honest. Uh, he reminds me of Justin, discussing Justin. A little bit, honest. yeah. He's just like the harder and worse the conditions are, the better he performs typically mm -hmm. in his career. That's been true. So I just, uh, like I don't I don't know if anybody now it seems crazy but I don't know if everybody remembers the march to the Ben Askren fight but a lot of commentators are like oh Ben Askren's the next big thing and blah 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 and he was I mean look Ben Askren's a great fucking grappler he absolutely is he's one of the pro he might have been at the time one of the top five wrestlers in all of MMA or all of the UFC um, but that doesn't matter when you get knee in the fucking face and. In the military, there's something we call violence of action. Now, everybody has some degree of that in the UFC if you're a professional fighter, but violence of action is you act so aggressively that it catches people off guard, right? Like running across the ring and kneeing somebody in the fucking forehead to start the fight. You know what I mean? I, I, would, I can never count Masvidal out, and to be honest, I know it seems counterintuitive, but because the situation is so fucked up is why I'm betting on him. Got it. Yeah, and look, I, I, my heart wants it to happen, so I'll be happy to lose a couple hundred bucks just to see him win because I, I want to see a mega fight with him and McGregor mm. later on down the road. I think that would be a blast. And um, I, I look, I want to see him win, and I, I hope uh, I am wrong on this. Uh, however, uh, I'm, I'm going to bet Usman on this. Uh, right beneath it, we got the Max Holloway uh, rematch here. Um, man, this is a sexy, sexy fight, and it's fun. Um, 
who do you got in this one? Uh, by Anthony. the way, before we move on, um, <clears throat> only about 32 or 33 percent of Masvidal's fights have gone the distance in his entire career. Yeah, I'm, and that's why I'm ha hammering the under on this one. Yeah, I just so, wanted to bring that back up so everybody knows. Don't, don't, of course. Don't fucking. So in this fight on mybookie.com, we were ha I am hammering the mm. under, and I'm taking Usman with it. Um, I might parlay it. We'll see how, how uh, uh, flirty I'm feeling later. But uh, uh, there is two different bets in this this main event, and that is it. The under and then obviously the winner. And uh, I'm, I'm betting both on this. So, yeah, uh, there's no fucking way this is going the distance. Not a prayer. Not a no, prayer. no way. Uh so with regard to Max Holloway, I mean, he's – I really like this guy, to be honest. So do I. And I thought he won the first fight, um, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, that was one of those controversial ones. What was it, in December or some shit? Um, mm -hmm. You know, it went the distance. It went, look, it's weird because in boxing, if you're the setting champion and the fight goes the distance, it's very rare that you lose. Like, even if it's, like – 30 29 you still might win because you're the fucking reigning champion you have to knock out the champ to become the champ that's fucking one of the old unwritten rules of fighting and i was very surprised that he lost that fight uh i'm guessing that he's pretty unhappy about that yeah. um i don't know if it plays to his advantage to be raged out he's a pretty calm and collected guy like he fights with a purpose uh so i, I don't think he's gonna rage out or anything like that but man, he's only his last like fucking <laughs> his last couple of fights. Anthony Pettis, twice against Jose Aldo, Brian Ortega, fucking Dustin Poirier, Frankie Edgar, and then uh, uh, this guy uh, Volkanovski. He he's he hasn't fi fought a non great fighter in a very long time. Like he hasn't had a fucking no. easy one in a very very long time. I think he's gonna fucking win, man. I do too, and he's the underdog in this. He's a plus yeah. 160, and <clears throat> I'm going to take him. There is some interesting prop bets on this on mybookie.com that you should really, really look at if you're looking to make some money off of this. Um, one of them is Max Holloway by KO, TKO, or DQ. Mm. That is plus 750. <laughs> if you put $100 on that, that is a $7,000 return on that bet. Um, so he's fought 26 times in total, whew. and 10 yep. of them were knockouts. And right. two were submissions, so that's twelve. That's almost half of his fights. That's a decent bet. If you can it's go a decent, if you, bet, if you have a, money. if you have a fifty-fifty shot at a plus seven eighty-five or whatever the fuck it is, I would take that mm -hmm. bet just for the hell of it. Like why? Not, why wouldn't you just throw a hundred bucks on that? Because you could win fucking a lot of money. Seven grand. Uh, the next one is Max Holloway by decision or technical decision. Um, I personally think this will more than likely go the distance, but it's a plus 300. So I'm going to bet that as well, where it's like, all right, great. Put 100 down, you win $300 back. That's a three to one odds on that. I like shit like that. Um, there's also uh, methods for, look, the, the biggest payday is a draw at plus 5,000. That's not going to happen. There's not going to be a draw in a fucking title fight again. <laughs> Did you imagine, though? Um, that's like that's <clears> like uh, betting on zero or double zero on roulette. But if you put a hundo on that, congratulations, you win fifty grand. I think Holy there should shit. be, uh, in 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 the case of combat sports, I feel like there should be no ties. Like you go into overtime, and then after a certain amount of overtime, you start getting different weapons. You know what I mean? <laughs> like a spike bat. Yeah, like the second overtime, you get a fucking uh, just a wiffle ball bat. And see what happens. <laughs> then you get a progressively harder bat as time goes on and to see what happens to me i mean I, look you signed up for it we'll give you helmets and shit yeah why not can you why imagine not? that like fucking gladiator style hitting each other with fucking baseball bats like genghis khan and bill and ted remember that shit when he's running around the mall it'd be so with the football great. pads and helmet on and with a fucking aluminum baseball bat fuck yeah dude i'd watch that shit look there's only two sports going on right now <laughs> ufc and nascar um you know maybe you put one of those guys in front of a car no i say yeah combine them yeah, <laughs> have somebody fight a car. Remember in Blazing Saddles when Mongo punched that cow in the face? Why can't we do that with a car? Uh, it'd be great. Bubba Wallace versus uh, uh, Street Jesus. I don't know. Just it one. might be a hate crime if you hit his car, though. It's true. Because it says true. Black might Lives Matter on it. it. Yeah, might have to switch it to Usman versus Bubba Wallace and yeah. then see what happens. I still got Usman in that one, by the way. Um, <laughs> against Bubba Wallace? Yeah. Yeah, I think Bubba Wallace would. I, I don't. He he seems like the kind of guy that's ever been in a real fight in his life, to be honest. No, but against Bubba Wallace in his car. Oh um, yeah, yeah, look, yeah. Bubba Wallace has never won in his. No, car, he's never won so. at anything, probably. 
No. So I, I think I, I'd still go Usman on that one. Yeah. Um, Let's see if we can set that up. At, at 40. I'd let him go 40, <clears throat> I think, 40 miles an hour. Uh, next up, we got uh, Jose Aldo versus uh, Peter Jan. Uh, this is uh, for another championship. So another another belt's on the line here. And this was the one that was vacated by uh, uh, your boy, yeah. the little Ewok. Yep. Um, who who walked away? Um, you know, he's he'll be back. I think he'll be back as well. Like he's you can't fucking. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can. You can do whatever the fuck you want, but he he. You're not gonna get paid money if you're a fucking lightweight, boring fighter. Sorry. No. Like I don't no. know why you're thinking that's gonna happen. You gotta work those sponsorships, bro. You're not gonna get paid in the ring. Yeah, uh, uh, and so this one, um, it's uh, Jose Aldo plus 180, and Peter Yan is uh, minus 220. Um, and, and this one, man, look, I, Jose Aldo is, is a great fighter, mm. um, and he's probably a Hall of Famer, to be honest with you. But um, I think he's a little past his prime here, and I think uh, I think he loses this fight. So I'm going to bet on uh, on Yan. <sighs> yeah, I hate to go with the Russian, but, I mean, he's, he's had a pretty good string of fights, too. Um, yeah. He just he fucking lit Uriah Faber up in December. I mean, he hit him yeah. hard, and he hasn't fought in six months too, so he's fresh. I don't know when's the last time uh, Jose Aldo fought. I can't, I can't remember. It I was, and oh, it was the same fight, December fourteenth. I think he's coming off of two <clears throat> losses, if if memory serves. Yeah, he lost to Volkanovski for the con- yeah. number one contender fight, and then he uh, lost to Marlon Moraes. I don't even know how you say his name. Yeah, uh, he lost his last two. I, I think this will knock him out for good, and he'll probably retire after this. It's one of those in the ring retirements. It, that's my guess. Um, but he's definitely a Hall of Famer. And uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, lost five yeah, out of I his just, eight last fights. I just can't put money on 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 him anymore. So I'm going to take uh, Jan at minus two twenty here. Uh, I'm not going to touch this over under. Um, when guys are this light, it just uh, it doesn't behoove you to do that. Yeah, uh, the heavyweights absolutely, um, or the you know the main events are fine, but at this weight, I just wouldn't bet the over under if if I'm you. Uh, next up, we got the ladies. Uh, ooh, we got the ladies in this. Uh, Amanda Rebus and uh, Paige Van Sant. Um, fun fights. However, I think this is going to be one sided, and uh, I'm going to Amanda Rebus in this. Um, is it worth betting at minus eight oh five on Amanda Rebus? Probably not. But if you're bored and want to throw you know ten dollars on it to make a dollar back. Yeah, why not? You know? Hopefully it's at least I'm not going to bet on this at all because I don't really give a shit, but hopefully it's better yeah. than remember that uh the first round of fights that came back, it was one of the undercard women fights and it was basically like watching WNBA layup drills. Like what are you guys going to do here? Fucking somebody break somebody's shit. It it was awful and uh, that I'll, was the I'll only watch. fight I missed on that entire card by the way. Yeah. It was those chicks. It I, was the the hotty karate chick. Yeah, that was terrible. Uh I liked yeah. uh I like Amanda Nunez. I'll watch her fight anytime. She fucks people up. Same. Like, Same. that's what I want to see. I want to see home runs. I want to see fucking bomb passes from goddamn Patrick Mahomes. And I want to see people get their fucking shit pushed in. Yep. I don't want to see people fucking slap each other and fucking crawl around on the ground like a bunch of dum-dums. I agree. And, and, and But in the next one, I think we're going to get that. And that's Thug Rose. <laughs> Thug Rose is fighting uh, yeah. Jessica Andre in this one. Uh, she's a minus 200. Um, you know, I... <laughs> I, I just enjoy watching her fight. I'm going to throw money on this. Mm. And uh, every time she gets in there, it's fun, man. She reminds me of, of uh, what's the movie with uh, Ferris Fair, Billie Jean, the legend of Billie Jean in the 80s, dude. I just think she's that girl, dude. And uh, I, don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm too young to know what that means. Ferris Fair, Billie Jean. Ferris Fair. Um, God, it's a good one. It's a real goddamn good one. Very close to an after school special. It doesn't sound good. One of the first movies I saw growing up, uh, obviously I'm 30, 36 years old, and uh, saw it at about age four, and I loved every second of it. But okay, she reminds me of of, uh, of Billie Jean in that one. So I'm going to go Thug Rose in this at minus 200. And uh, I don't know if this one's worth betting on, to be honest. I mean, she's going to, if you want to throw a bunch of money on it, she's definitely going to win because that's what you're going to have to do to make any real money off it. Or if you just want to bet for the fucking sake of it, that's fine too. But yeah, she's going to, I expect her to dominate this fight. She's got whatever. Whatever, like, mental fucking either gene or disorder it requires to get mm-hmm. hit and your first response is to fucking rage out and start punching the fuck out of somebody else. Uh, yeah. Instead of, like, 
A lot of people get hit and cover up. She gets hit and fucking immediately attacks. Whatever that is, she's got it, and it's going to be difficult to beat her at this point, I think. Watching her is like watching a Halsey video. Um, it's just female power here on this mm. one. I, I, I'm a huge fan of Thug Rose. By the way, if you're at home and you're asking what minus 200 means and why Dan's not going to bet that, if you put 100 on it, you get $50 back. So that's kind of what it means. Um, you get about half your money back on that one. That's why a lot of people stay out of this unless you're going to bet a shitload of money because at a minus 200, it, yeah, it takes, it takes a lot of money to win a lot of money in this. Um, but uh, I'm going to do it for the love of the game in this one and just my enjoyment of watching her fighting. Therefore, yeah, I'm going to throw a couple hundred on Thug Rose in this one. Um, the rest of them uh, are too close to, uh, pardon me, too close to call mm. in my opinion. Therefore, going through the rest of these cards is worthless and financially, I can't help you out on that. Uh, you can take a coin out of your front pocket and flip it in the air and make your own decisions on that. But uh, I'm not going to tell you to throw money away just to do it. So does anybody even have coins anywhere? Five. What's up? Does anybody even have coins anywhere? Yeah, dude. And I, you know, what's disgusting about it is, you know, driving cross country here to Texas, I stopped in a bunch of different states and every fast food joint uh, you could imagine just to keep going. And not only do they give you change back, which is like, man, where the fuck does that has that been and how much Corona's on it? Um, but they give it to you now in a in a dirty ass plastic cup. So mm -hmm. they, they don't even touch it anymore. They just they pour it into your hand. And I'm like, motherfucker, just keep it. Yeah, I don't need change at all. Uh, it's weird. Yep. Um, I heard a story one time about a guy that was putting change up his ass. And ever since then, I've never touched it. <laughs> I understand. Uh, I definitely understand. Um, one one last question for you here, Dan, before we get off the air. I, I had a Popeye's <laughs> spicy chicken sandwich for the first time ever. Right. I don't know if you've had it. There's been a lot of our listeners asking who the, the, the winner is in that. Uh, and if you were betting on this on mybookie.com, who would win in a fight? It's Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich versus Chick-fil-A sandwich. I love Chick-fil-A more than life itself. This was my very first time having a Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich, and I, I, I have to say I am in on the hype. Popeye's beats the Chick-fil-A sandwich. I'm sorry to say it. Um, the only thing that I think they might have done a little bit better is the texture, like the crunch is better. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, I think Chick-fil-A for a spicy chicken, they could probably improve that, fry it a little bit longer. Um, but, uh, but the sauce, there, there, there is a sauce that Popeye's is putting on it, whereas Chick-fil-A's you get no sauce, and I'm all in on whatever that sauce is. Well, you don't the need pickles are still there. You don't I'm need good. sauce if, like an adult, you put strawberry jelly on your fucking spicy chicken sandwich, like I've been telling you dicks to do. <laughs> a lot of people have written in, so they've tried it, and you were you were correct in that. Yeah, uh, I will give it a go. However, um, I finally hit a Popeye's that didn't have a line, like you know, uh, like the bread aisle and and fucking afghanistan and yeah. uh so i was like all right i'll get it i'm in let's well, try it that's also the hype. that's the problem with popeyes in general though like if you if there's a good one you can you know you're gonna get quality shit from then go there and check it out but if it's a regular popeyes i would say probably maybe one out of eight are actually decent and the rest <laughs> the rest it's like they fucking take the chicken out of the freezer which is probably where it came from and then they throw it in the garbage and then somebody fucking takes a shit on it and then yeah, they pull it yeah. out, wash it off, bread it, fry it, and then that's it. So I don't, I don't need that in my life, to be honest. It's hilarious you say that, man. The place that I went to was so disgusting, and I was like, man, is this sandwich worth worth it? Um, but I, I wanted to tell the story and finally answer this question after the last year of people bickering over it that I was like, fuck it, I'll wait. But you're right, man. All of these Popeyes are dirty as fuck for some reason. Whereas Chick-fil-A, you could eat off the floor there and know that you wouldn't catch anything. I do frequently eat off the floor in a Chick-fil-A just to flex on people. <laughs> like, I'll sit Indian style right in the middle of the fucking line and eat my sandwich and, like, dare somebody to fucking say something about it. What are you going to do? It's fucking America, bitch. Yeah, you're goddamn right. It's America. And uh, Dana White has moved all of the fights out of America to Fight Island. Uh, we will be watching these fights tomorrow night bet with us or against us on mybookie.com promo code drinking bros will give you 150 percent of your deposit back uh looking forward to it dan uh looking forward to seeing you soon and uh for d'anthony d'anthony holloway i'm ross patterson this is an emergency drinking bros sports companion show good night everyone